everyone welcome to the youth segment on the sage i'm sure you're surprised right why do we talk about what is going to be affecting the highest population in a country and not involve those population itself in the conversation something will be wrong which is why we felt it passionate enough that the youth segment should be introduced on the sage with this new wave of discussion we want to make sure that every young person is prepared for 2023. Why? Because we have the opportunity to define our future for the next four years. We have the opportunity to determine who we want as leaders and who we want out. But when you're not rightly informed and when you're not sure of what decisions to make, the tendency to make the wrong one is really high, which is why the SAGE is here at this point in time. And what the SAGE is doing right now is not just bringing in stakeholders in those different sectors, because we're taking it one issue at a time. We're bringing in the young people themselves. We want to hear your voices. You deserve a platform where you're heard, and everybody needs to know that this is where the shoe is pinching. So that's why we're here. This is the reason for the youth segment on the SAGE show. So welcome. I remember when we still when I was in university, there are some things you can't publicly like you don't have the courage to even come and say, ah, I'm doing this thing. You you'll be so coded because there was just I don't know this whether it's the term fear of the Lord, but you get this fear. Let me speak Pigeon. You get this fear when you go day inside you. You say, you will give yourself a brain. You say, ah. You just that maybe, I mean, you're a Yahoo guy or you're an Aristo babe. You, you may even be the one, I'm sure you, you may be the one in the front of the church and hallelujah. Because, hey. You know, you, know, you asked. Was, so why is it? It's not trending now. You asked a salient question. Where did we miss it? Yes. I went to a Catholic school. In the seminary, it doesn't matter what, what you, who you are, or your parents, what you have. If you wouldn't behave according to the rules, lay down rules, you are expelled. You are made to study and you must study. So there's another level of training that comes after the family because the family won't take you to the end of your, or end yeah. of time. So where did we get it wrong? You see, even the schools too, we are really having a lot of difficulties in the schools. Yeah, where people so are not, so where so entrepreneurs, or sorry, um, proprietors, or as it were, are not paying attention. Now we have, we talk, we, we've mentioned us to earlier on. Mm. The teachers union, TUC, they've always been on, um, they've always been on strike. Public schools, they've always been on strike. Sure. And so the children, if you go to public schools, it is not even a befitting environment for you to study and learn. So at that point, it is not longer the responsibility, all the responsibility of the family anymore. It has shifted to, mm -hmm. to the government and then um, to, the to the teachers to business owners, because uh, take, we take it or leave it, most of these primary, most of these schools, private school we have, mm. we have, and they are businesses. It yeah, is no longer yeah, a vocation. Yeah, yeah. It's no longer oh, a vocation. Yes, it's school. no longer a vocation as we used to have it. Mm. And so we have a school recently, it was reported in Lagos, how a group of boys ganged up and beat another one to death because he would not join a, co a, a court group. So we, we, we see that in schools, in secondary schools. Oh. So when we graduate from there to the university, we have court groups already. Hmm. And then um, you dare not talk to this child. Some parents will come and um, harass you as, mm -hmm. as owner of a school. They come and harass you for trying to put this child right. Hmm. But it's like a time bomb. It will get to a stage where it's going to explode. And so in the universities like that, you have the same scenario. The lecturers really don't care. We are here to lecture. Whether you're in class or no, not, no. he lectures, he talks to the walls, he walks out. At the end of the month, he makes his money. And so the secondary school proprietor, whether you learn or you don't learn, your mother or your father will pay your school fees. Will make, I'll make my money, I'll pay no my salary, care. I will move. So from this point, it will just be disintegrating. This child is disintegrating with time, but you're not seeing it. Until it gets to where, how did you get here, it becomes the question we ask. Because a lot of dis yes, disintegration of had taken yes. place over time over through time. these basic institutions. True. Because in those days, if you are out of the father's house and you misbehave, 
the next uncle or auntie who, who has no connection he with you is going to conk your head. Yes, yes that's, you. that's true. And he doesn't stop there. He holds you by the ear and takes you, you to your mother. The, the moment your mother sees a stranger dragging your ear to her, he may not even, she may not even ask this stranger what has happened. Please explain yourself. Yeah. You will receive. <laughs> Although I have to say that our oh, harsh discipline you know, also has side Yes, effect, but, but, but this child knows yeah, that there's, there's, in the absence of daddy and mommy, somebody is still going to somebody is still going to caution me. Yeah. The community is watching. The society is watching. But yeah, now, but now, but, I, you may not even know who's your next door neighbor. Like right the now. Dowen College um, issue. Hurt Imagine having a child who is that problematic. And then you as a parent, you are going to defend. You as a parent, why did you put the child in the boarding school in the first place? True. Didn't you see the sign? Do you understand? Some of them put their children in boarding school to run away from their responsibilities. Mm. They see how problematic the child is. They say, let the teachers go and train them. Mm. Yeah, me personally, I used to say, when you see a child that is introverted, there's you as a, a parent, you have. Because most times when you see an introvert, they don't always open up. I personally, I, I didn't really used to talk. So I was bullied a lot in school. We are talking about the bullies now. Yeah. I, because the truth... Bullies are even worse. Yes. Because, they were, they were and you know, bullying, bullying, can as, bullying can also come out from a dysfunctional family. True. Because the children are always watching. True. What is daddy doing to mommy? Mommy. Do you understand? Oh, what is so they not saying? take it out on other people. True. You but understand? So everything still goes back to the family but what of now because now we've seen that there's also this external influence that plays out to so what forms an average young nigerian now mm. what about uh what we see on tv social media and tv like the truth about me it. personally sorry yeah there was i was you know this explore search icon mm -hmm. you say i was just screening i shouldn't have and I just saw one music video and they were just smoking and girls were just, oh my God. I saw the outfits and I was like, okay, okay. I'm like, what's going on? And you know, there's this thing about imagery, images. It's, it sticks. It sticks. It pops up. And try the whole day. <laughs> it pops up. It took a while for me to flush. And I'm like, imagine a young person. Or, because now let's even... From the age of adolescence, from the age of 10, 15, because many parents don't control what their children want. Mm -hmm. You already seen such. He's why? What has happened to our music industry? What is going on? Yeah. Like those videos, don't they know that they have side effects? You're telling a young person that it's okay to smoke, and and because because that's what it is like. I, it's, it's fine to smoke weed because I'm seeing a music person. His eyes is red. His trousers are here. Let's even leave the trust as first. <laughs> the the eyes as if I don't even think there's white eyes anymore. Then he's riding this kind of car, living in this kind of house, and I'm like, and the person probably didn't even go to school. So what's the use of my my mommy? What's what's mommy teaching me? Okay, let's bring it down to reality. Yes, we are westernized. We of course they have uh, because they believe. Anyway, to be honest with you, they believe those things sell more. How many people do you see that tie their hair and sing song and, the, and they sell their Absolutely. albums? People, what they want to see is, of course, some naked boobs and all that on the screen. If you, you'll be surprised that somebody is advertising for toothpaste and is using breasts. I'm like, what's the relationship? Sure. Do you so understand? So. so, young children, because you know this whole youth thing we are talking about, so I'm still from upbringing, I'm still going back to the upbringing thing. You know, so they are growing up. They are seeing their sisters and their brothers who went to school. And they came out from school. Two, three, four years, there is no money. And the mother, the parents are probably asking for support and all that. And it's a struggle. And they look at this young guy on the screen. Uh, with flashy cars. You know, they are spraying money in parties. And all that. They are like, what mommy told me and what I'm seeing is not, is not uh, relating in any way. So you see young people that are not interested in going to school. What is the essence of going to school? What is the benefit? Do you understand? They are like, but I can make this money without going to school. And they want to be all flashy because the truth about it is that we have lost value for virtue. True. People are now 
egalized or praised by the amount of money they have, by the number of cars they drive, by the number of women they can carry. The number of followers they have. They have. See, you see this internet thing. <laughs> okay, what about, what about it's packaged, you know? <laughs> okay, what about okay? It's apart from that, what about a mother dressing up her child and video the child dancing naked and all kinds of things? What, what about that one? Is that one also for money? You know, we've like I said, we've lost we've value lost some for value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all come from the home, yes. It all it, everything still goes down to the home. Yeah. Do you understand? Like I also said, you know, the parents have a lot of work to do. Pay attention. See, every child has a gift. Every child is unique. You cannot afford to train all your children in the same way. There are some children you need to give special attention to. When you are able to pick those traits, you deal with them at that tender age, before they start growing. Another thing is peer pressure. Why are they doing this? Thing? My friend went to England. I must go to England. My friend is, is uh, carrying a Prada bag. I must carry a Prada bag. So they are unnecessarily pressurizing their self. And that is one thing the internet is doing. I always try to encourage you, when you are going through the internet or suffering through the internet, be going there with your brain. Oh. Most of those, those people you see there, they don't, those things are packaging. Yeah. They are fake. They are not real. And also, I also would have loved to talk to parents too because, number one, most parents, like, maybe I went out, I went to town, I maybe prostitute, do all kinds of things, bring money home, bring cars home, give my parents money. Then you will now look at your junior one or maybe the other one. Ah, what are you sitting down there and do? Look at this so, so, yeah, so, and so person is doing this. So yeah. you now push the child to go and do what she never dreamt of doing because you want her to be like Mr. A. So everything about it is from home. The parents yeah. should know how to push their children and what to give the children because if you didn't train up a child and you don't expect that child to come home and give you what you expect, first of all, you will first of all start train up that child, give her the best you can. I've seen parents that sell their rappers oh, to yes. send their children oh, to school. Yes. Do your best. If you do it with prayer, I believe your child will come out and do and make you proud at the end of the day. Oh, that yes. is it. Wow. So in summary, we've seen that there's a huge decadence that eating deep. It has eaten really deep. It has eaten deep into our culture. It has eaten deep into our society. And it's from different facets. We are now having leaders who don't care. The heart of a leader to serve is missing. And it has been missing for years. We are seeing the wrong kind of images, the wrong kind of influence being put out. And even the family themselves have lost touch so what do we do there is still hope where like, do we start <laughs> like i said earlier <laughs> the question is yes they have failed us but what do we do do we remain on the ground we need to pick ourselves up and run look for ways we can empower ourselves through skills acquisitions these are even things that government can also do to help us Yes, a lot of us even have skills to start businesses, but we don't even know how to fund these businesses or business ideas that we have. So if the government can even create an opportunity, let me use an instance. You know, but every little thing that comes up opportunity is always hijacked by some group of people. Mm. Talking about the CBN loan, for instance, mm. that came up, you understand? I applied for this loan. I went for interview. I was called for interview. At the point of the interview, I was told that I was the most organized person they have interviewed for that day in terms of documentations. Because I made sure I carried everything just, just I was prepared. So when the guy looked at it, do you have, ah, so like, ma'am, that you're about the most organized person I've interviewed today. And I said, oh, thank you. And I left, you know, excited that oh there's a positive um, you know news coming up for me till tomorrow no 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 and then you hear of people who are getting these loans who did not even apply for it so every little the, the government i would say yes they failed but they are trying 
But the problem is when they bring out this solution, these solutions are hijacked by some people. There's no system in place. There's no system in place to enforce. So it's not enough for the government or the office of the vice president to say, I approve these to encourage SMEs. What happens along the, the, the line, the value chain, the enforcement chain? What happens along that line? Do you understand? So yes, they need to keep doing more. We as individuals, we as youth, Look for the way you can, you can empower yourself with a skill. I tell people, I say, university now, yes, it does not really give you the knowledge. It just makes you, you know, it just puts you in a particular base level. Base level. True. Do something for yourself. What is that thing you're passionate about? What is that thing you can turn into money? After school, I looked for a job for a while. I worked in a couple of places. You understand? And for so many years, I sat down looking for a job. I have a passion of cooking. And I'm like, why don't I convert this passion into a business? And that was how Safi event was born. Wow. And from there, of course, we, you know, when you start something, you know, when you it talk grows. about focus, when you yeah. focus on something, you build a particular business, you build a particular brand. As you grow, you can now use those loyal customers or loyal followers to build another brand. So, but for you, yes, the government has failed you, but what can you do for yourself? Do you understand? So what is that thing you can find your hand doing? He said, God said he will bless the works of our hands, which means there must be something you are working with your hand for him to find to bless. Yes. He's not going to throw money from heaven. No. You must find yourself doing something. I found myself doing some spices, and that was why I got an opportunity for C4C. True. If I crossed my hand and was waiting for manna to fall from heaven, of course, nobody will even, you know, it's not enough to create an idea now. A lot of investors these days are scared of even giving those in the idea state because they will divert the fund. So if you have an idea Push it. and it takes one million to run, mm -hmm. sacrifice your 1,000 and bring a prototype. Let them see what you're talking about. Then an investor that now looks at it and looks at your business plan can say, okay, this business is a viable business. This business is a profitable business. Let me throw in my two cents. Let me throw in my one cent. So we as youth need to empower ourselves first with knowledge. Don't tell me you don't have money. There are a lot of free courses online. True. There are a lot of things you can do online. You can learn how to bake cake online. True. Thank God for YouTube. Yes. There's a lot of things you can learn to empower yourself online. Then when you have now empowered yourself and you now have a business idea, you now draw up a business plan, you know your blueprint, what step you need to take, you can now start looking for investors. When C4C invested in us, is that not why we, how we started growing? From there, we started our business, other people started seeing us. If C4C didn't invest in us or if we didn't have an idea, would other people see us? So yes, the economy has failed us. The economy is even crippling. Don't fail yourself. But don't fail yourself. Build yourself. Encourage yourself. Yes, it's not easy. Nobody says... See, the life of an entrepreneur is not easy. Oh. If they thought the entrepreneurship was easy, they, are, they lied to you. Oh. <laughs> Do you understand? If they told you entrepreneurship was easy, they lied to you. It's a continuous struggle. But when your heart is in it... You keep pushing. You That's keep true. pushing. That's true. You keep pushing until you hit that mega million. Oh. Mm -hmm. So let's empower ourselves and start from there. And then when you grow, please, please, don't keep everything to yourself. Empower others. Yes. As you grow, that skill you have learned, teach other people. You know, just to add to us, that's one of the things we, we're passionate, that fuels our passion in C4C, is that when you help one young person, you've empowered one person that will be able to help three other people. And the three other people can help another five or six other people. It grows. That's how, that's how a society flourishes. There's, there's a coordination and an interconnectedness that flourishes from just one empowerment. So just to add to what Ingozi has said, it needs to start with you. The government has failed us. You're not happy. There's a lot of inflation. But in that one room that you are, you need to talk to yourself and tell yourself that this life is yours. There is no duplicate. And you make a mental decision first to be happy. 
and to use that self-motivation to make something out of your life. You need to self-motivate yourself. You need to wake up every day and look at yourself in the mirror and say, you can do this. Let the whole world be crumbling down. You can do this. You can be that beacon of light. Imagine if every young Nigerian somehow finds a way in the middle of all this darkness to think that bit by bit the light will shine. So at this point, we may not have hope, but as Ingozi has said, let it start here. Let, that, let it come from inside. Everything you need to succeed in life is from inside. So bring it out. It's not easy, but bring it out. I'm, Eric? I'm going to add my voice to that. Yes. I will say... Let's hear the solutions. <laughs> I, I, I will say to myself, I will do what is right. So the solution to fix Nigeria can be done Nigeria can be fixed in one week. It is just for us to decide as a people that I will do what is right. And so she, you just made, made mention of um, the CBN loan. A lot of persons have refused to do what is right. And so we still have a problem. But can I decide to do what is right? And can you decide to do what is right? And together we do what is, we, do, we decide to do what is right. We will fix Nigeria in one week. We should be wary of building a youth group that, is, that, has, that has nothing to lose. True. We should be wary of building a youth group that has nothing to lose. So I look at Nigeria as a young man and there is nothing to lose. So I can decide to do anything because there is nothing to lose. So we should be, let us decide to do what is right. If I'm a parent, let me do my job rightly as a parent. If you're a teacher, we have cases of teachers molesting children in secondary schools and all that. If I am a teacher, let me do my job rightly as a teacher. I'm a security agent. I'm a policeman. Oh. Can I police rightly? Yes, I can do the right thing. So within a week, within a month, who see changes? We could have fixed Nigeria Ripple to effect. that country we yeah. want to be. And so it, it, it goes up into government. So when we do what is right, then we can have a good, go a good government because the government is a product of the society. This government was not imp imported from any country, from anywhere. It's a product of Nigeria. It's a product of our, of our culture and tradition, what we mm. decided to do with ourselves. Yeah. So if we decide to do what is right, we will get a government that is right. And that begins from 2023. What is right as a citizen for me is not to take money from anybody who has been there for only God knows how long and vote for him. You please do the, do the right thing. Vote for somebody who will listen to the cry of the young people. Vote for somebody who will make, who will make this difference. Like somebody who believes in doing good, who believes in humanity. It is not by my tone. It is not who is um, who should be in government. It's not my it's not life ambition. Who is, who is evil? Who it's not, is your it's not about my life ambition. Mm -hmm. But it's about who's got love for humanity. Because mm -hmm. for, for all I care, it is about humanity. Mm -hmm. There is no amount of money we'll make as an individual that will be that will satisfy you. Mm -hmm. But humanity, and that is where my call to, to everybody goes out. My call goes out. You know. The government can really do all these things, no matter how hard they try. The government can really do all these things. And that's why I want to start from the individual level. Can I do what is right? Let the political parties do, do what is right. Let us do what is right. For instance, you choose the right candidates and allow the right processes to be followed. And, and because this is a youth group, let me really come down to the youth group. Because there are over 5 million 50 million, is it? 55 million out there. And these are pray, real pray in the hands of anything, anybody, any group. The Conversations for Change started an, an initiative. Take 15 persons in a year or in a circle and see them through life. So I, I decide, and, and if we expand this idea, let every corporate organization let every political Take party, batch, yeah. let every church, mm. let every mosque, mm. let every organization take 10, 10 
Nigerian youth off the streets and put them through a meaningful life. And in a year or less, we are here today, we, we shouldn't have been, mm. but for conversations for change. So if every organization, let every bank, it's not about just making money. I, I don't know what you're going to do with all this money at the end of the day anyway. But for, if for every bank in Nigeria can take 10 Nigerian youths, believe in them, invest in them. They are assets. We are assets. We are not liabilities. If the federal government can establish youth development bank. So as I'm graduating from school, mm -hmm. I have an idea. I am not worried about how to finance my idea. I can go get some funds, get started. The pressure for look, the pressure on jobs will be reduced. Mm -hmm. And so I and I got that idea from my mentor, um, Dr. Kimi Adishino. He said, yeah. establish <laughs> a youth bank. We are not liabilities. We are assets. And if you make good use of these assets, it will show. Sure. It will show. Sure. Very. Wow. We can transform this country within a short time. Those are powerful solutions. Do you have any to add, Teresa? Government have not failed us. I don't think so. But we fail ourselves. If you choose, because the truth of the matter is that the governments are there. We are you. We are the ones suffering it. Mm -hmm. So you should know if you live as they said. Leave good example. You can choose not to do what others are doing. You can choose to be good. Yeah, it starts with the decision. Yes. So, God will always help his own children at the end of it. Mm. So, you don't have to follow what other people are do. doing. So, we've heard from the youth. You've seen where it pinches us. There's a lot of problems, we know. But change starts in one day. You know, we always say, I personally believe this quote, it's never too late to do what is right. It's never too late to do what is right. There's a lot of problems, we know, but it's never too late to start a right. And it starts now. So see for see, true to say true, he's doing his own beats. We're putting out this information to every young person watching and to every stakeholder watching. There's work to be done. But it's never too late to start and to do what is right. We've aired our problems. We've told you where it pinches us. But we've given you tangible solutions also. Let's get to work. See you next time.